What's going on you all? It's Kimi Michelle here and welcome back to the Kita Fashion YouTube channel. So you all, today is a very, very special day. It is the fifth year anniversary of Key to Fashion. And I'm very, very grateful. I really am. The fact that I made it to five years, I've learned a lot, I've grown a lot, and I'm just so grateful to be doing this. And I wanted to come through and share with you all some lessons that I have learned these past five years. But I also wanted to share with you all a brief background story of why I wanted to start Kita Fashion in the first place. I thought that would be really, really important to do for anyone that's new, or even if you're not new here. I think it's just important for me to share that background story of why I really wanted to start Kita Fashion in the first place and what really is the motivating factor for me wanting to do this. So without further ado, let's dive in. So I first found my love for fashion when I was a freshman in high school. And similar to many people in high school, I was following the crowd. If somebody had the Lacoste shirt on, I had to go get a Lacoste shirt on too. If somebody had the True Religion jeans on, oh, I had to go get the True Religion jeans too. I was just monkey seeing and monkey doing, following what everybody else was doing. And what was so interesting about that was the more that I followed what everybody else was doing and I followed the crowd, the more lost that I felt. And I felt that feeling deep down inside. And one day I said to myself, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I cannot do this anymore. I cannot continue to follow what everybody else is wearing. I gotta find my own style. I gotta just start to step out and express who I really am. And that's exactly what I started to do. And at first, there were people that were very apprehensive about my new style change. And when I would walk in the hallway, I would hear the chitter chatter, oh, what is she wearing? What has she got on? What is that? Because back in the day, if you wasn't matching from head to toe, or if you didn't have the latest Jordans and you wasn't matching your outfit with your Jordans, you wasn't fly, you wasn't stylish to everybody. Or if you didn't have the trues or the Lacoste or the coach bag, you wasn't fly, you wasn't stylish. And I didn't wanna do that anymore. And if you wasn't following what everybody else was wearing, you certainly wasn't looking like you were cool or stylish, right? And I wasn't wearing what everybody else was wearing anymore. I was doing my own thing and finding my own style and really enjoying the journey. And I found that the more that people were talking about what I was wearing, the more I started to say to myself, you know, I must be doing something right because the chitter chatter wasn't enough to make me say, you know what, let me go back and follow what everybody else is wearing. Let me go back and just abandon my individuality and follow what everybody else is wearing now. I couldn't do that. The liberation that I felt deep down inside was too powerful. It was too strong. And I said, you know what, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing because I love what I'm doing. I love what I'm wearing now. And I love the feeling that these outfits are providing me with. And by junior year, my style was not only my staple and my safe haven, but it was what everybody knew me for. Everybody would say, oh yeah, I know Key, you know, I love her personality, but I also love her style. And it was so interesting because just two years prior, that wasn't the same tune that many people were saying. So I wanna share that because that is the basis of why I really wanted to start Key to Fashion or why I wanted to have a career in fashion in the first place. I wanted to find a way to inspire people and to empower people to feel that feeling that I felt in my freshman year of high school, that liberation, that embracement of one's individuality. I wanted to find a way to really inspire people to say, you know what, this is me and I don't care who likes it or not. I'm going to express myself, I'm gonna love what I wear, and I'm just gonna march to the beat of my very own drum. I wanted to find a way to really inspire people to do that. Because I said to myself, this feeling that fashion has provided me with, I gotta share this feeling with others. I gotta find a way to share this feeling with others. And that was just the basis of it all. And after high school, I wasn't able to go to a fashion school. You know, coming from a Caribbean background, fashion school just wasn't on the table. And although now they're very supportive, back then they're like, girl, you think we came all the way here? <laughs> For you to go to a fashion school, come on now. And so I complied and I went to a four-year university, but that four-year university gave me a lot 
of great experiences when it came to fashion. And it wasn't even a four year fashion school at all. But at that four year university is where I started to thrift. And I really discovered my love for thrifting, but also my love for vintage fashion. I also worked at several different retail stores, such as Forever 21, Urban Outfitters, and TJ Maxx. And all of those stores gave me a really great insight and great experience in the retail side of fashion. And I also gained really great fashion internships in college as well, such as working at the Newmark showroom in New York and Karma Loop in Boston. And I also got the opportunity to host a pre-show for our annual fashion show at my university as well. And all of those experiences really ignited my imagination. And they allowed me to imagine myself in fashion, imagine myself in this industry, and imagine where my purpose really lied. Because that was a question that I was always asking myself in college. I love fashion, but where does my purpose lie? Where does my purpose lie? Where does my purpose lie? I was always asking myself this question over and over again. And I had to surrender the question and say to myself, you know what, the answer will find me. One day, the answer will find me. And also during that time frame is when Instagram came around and my name on Instagram was the key to fashion. And I remember saying to myself, I don't know what I'm gonna do in fashion, but I know when it comes to me, I'm gonna name it the key to fashion. Whatever the fashion brand is, I'm gonna name it the key to fashion. You know, the key to fashion would be a really great name for a fashion magazine. Oh yeah, it would be a really great name for a fashion magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna name it the key to fashion. I was just so sure of that. Even though I was confused, <laughs> I was so sure that whatever I do, I'm gonna name it the key to fashion. So let's fast forward now to when I really decided to start the Kita Fashion. Well, Kita Fashion, which is what I transformed it to. So it was 2016, the summer of 2016, and the thought came to my mind, you should start your own thrift store and you should name it the Kita Fashion. And I said, you know, I do like thrifting and I definitely always wanted to name my own fashion brand the Kita Fashion. Ah, I'm gonna do it. Let, let's, let's do it. And I ran with the idea. I started my business plan and I just ran with the idea. I started to take entrepreneurship classes in the fall at CWE, which is Center for Women in Enterprise in Boston. And they had free entrepreneurship classes at the time. I don't know if they still have them, but I started to take those classes. I started to meet with different thrift store owners in the city just to learn about their story and to learn about the highs and lows of what it takes to have your own thrift store. I took a 10 week business planning course in the spring and that course was amazing because I met some great people at that course. I was also the youngest person in the class, but you know, I just love the fact that everybody there was a dreamer. And at the end of the course, we had to present our business, not only to the entire class, but also other people in CWE. And we also had to present it to different judges. We had to present our businesses in front of different business owners in the city. So. It was quite intimidating at first. I remember when I presented my business and one of the judges said, you know what, if I was an investor, I would invest in your business right now. And he was so certain and so sure of what he was saying. I remember him looking at me like, girl, keep going, keep going. I know you're in the beginning of this, but keep going and I will always remember that. Sometimes during your hard times in entrepreneurship, it's those moments that really remind you, you know what, I, I'm, I must be doing something right. I gotta be doing something right. I must be doing something right. In that year as well, this was 2017 at the time, I also went to the NARTS conference, which was a nationwide conference for resale fashion owners, as well as entrepreneurs and consultants. And I met some amazing people at that conference. I remember people asking me, so where's your business? Um, is it online? Uh, do you have a brick and mortar? I'm like, oh, you know, not yet. I'm just here to learn. I'm just here to grow. And people looked at me like, wow, this girl came all the way here to Minnesota to learn and to grow. Okay, <laughs> she's determined, she's determined. <laughs> Because I, I had to just learn, I just felt like at that time, I had to gain a lot of different experience and I had to really just 
step out and just jump in the field as much as possible. Although I didn't know how I was going to do this, I said, you know what? I just gotta find a way to just learn as much as I can and to gain as much experience as I can. In addition, that same year is when I also worked at Plato's Closet, which is a buy, sell, trade store. And I was a resale fashion buyer there. And Plato's Closet at the time was a failing business. Well, the franchise that I was working at, it was a failing business. And I remember when the owner told me that in my interview, I was thinking to myself, hmm, okay, it's a failing business. I gotta figure out a way to get this business back afloat. I gotta figure this out. I gotta figure out how we can do this. And I was just so determined. And from talking to the customers, I realized the customers had no idea that they could come into the store not only to buy items, but to sell items. And I'm like, okay, there's a disconnect here. We don't have enough inventory because customers, number one, do not know that they can come in and sell items. And number two, the customers that do know, they don't even know what we need. So we really need to educate them on what we need, but really educate them to become better sellers. So that's exactly what I started to do. I started to just talk to the customers and educate them every time I would check customers out or every time they would come in to sell items. I created signs, started putting signs all around the store, but in sections of the store that I knew customers would be at, the fitting rooms, the mirrors, and in front of the store, sections that I knew, you know, you cannot miss this sign at all, even if you tried to miss this sign. A lot of the other employees that I was working with, they were teenagers and I would come in from my full-time job and this was my part-time job at the time and they would just be coming in after school like, ah! A lot of them were preparing for college so they didn't really care if the business was failing at all. But suddenly they started to care and suddenly a lot of them started to join me and they started to create signs and put signs in different sections and educate customers. And instead of it being an individual effort, it was a team effort now. We were all in this together. And when it's a team effort, that's when we really started to see a shift in the business. But a lot of them also looked at me for guidance. The owner of the store was hardly ever there. So a lot of the teenagers before I started working there were running the store. They were opening the store and closing the store because the owner wasn't there. So a lot of them started to look at me for not only guidance, but leadership. So when they started to see me putting signs up, they said to themselves, well, hey, if Key is putting up signs, then we gotta start to do the same thing. We gotta start putting up signs. Let's put up signs here. Let's start to educate customers as well. I remember one day I came in and there was a line all the way to the door. And I will never forget it. It was December 17th, 2017. And I walked in and one of the other employees said to me, Key, the signs, the signs we created, the signs. You know, the customers are coming in because of the signs. This is crazy. Like, look at all of these customers. Look at all these customers. And I was like, you know, y'all are right. But I'm like, all right, let's get to work. We got a lot of buys, you know, let's get to work. And on that particular day, the owner was there. And now her energy was off. She wasn't excited and she wasn't happy. Her energy was very, very, very off. And I remember she started to come over to me as I was doing the buys and micromanaging me. You know, Key, when you do a buy, you do a buy this way and you do a buy that way. And my intuition, right? I have a very strong intuition. And my intuition was telling me, you know, she's micromanaging you because she does not like the fact that you started to create those signs and now customers are coming in. She didn't like that. And she's coming over to me now and she's micromanaging me and she's saying, you know, Key, when you do a buy, you do a buy this way and you do a buy that way. You don't do a buy like that. You don't do a buy like this. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, this woman definitely knows that I know how to do a buy. She knows this. She knows this very, very well. I've got an employee of the month several times. She knows this. She knows this very, very well. And I turned to her and I said, I know how to do a buy. I know what I'm doing, but I appreciate your support. And she looked at me, right? And she got her bag and she stormed out. And everybody was looking at me, all the other employees like, wait, what? What was that? And I knew at that moment that I was gonna get fired. I didn't say it in a rude way. I didn't even say it in a snappy way. I said it just like that. Like, oh yeah, I know, I know. But I, I know how to do it by. <laughs> like, almost like, come on, you know I know how to do this. Like, why are you even telling me this? 
And for some reason, that bothered her. I was just cool, calm, and very collected. And that bothered her. But what really bothered her was the fact that there was a line all the way to the door because of the signs that we had created. That is what really bothered her. So when she stormed out, my intuition told me immediately, oh, you're getting fired. And so I turned to the employees and I said, I'm definitely getting fired. And they were all shocked. They couldn't even believe that she did something like that because they overheard the entire conversation. And they were like, that's ridiculous that she acted like that. That's very unprofessional. There's no way you're getting fired. I'm like, y'all, I am absolutely getting fired. I went home. I checked my email. What happened? A resignation letter. I got fired. And she wrote a whole bunch of BS, unwillingness to cooperate to, you know, directives and orders, all this blah, blah, blah talk, just making up lies because it was like, you had no reason to fire me. You just did not like the fact that I came in with the intention to change the business. And I did just that. You didn't like that. And so that did not stop me at all. That was my part-time job. So I still had income coming in. But that did not stop what I wanted to do. It did not make me say to myself, you know what, I got to stop doing this. It did not make me feel that way because deep down inside, I knew I was supposed to leave, but I did not want to leave. I didn't want to leave the team. I didn't want to leave them behind. But I kept feeling this feeling deep down inside. You know, what? it's definitely time for you to leave. You learn what you needed to learn. You have gained all the experience you needed to gain. It's definitely time for you to leave. So that experience just pushed me even more. And the following months to come, I started to plan key to fashion even more. I met a website designer in February and him and I started to work together to create the website and to create my logo. And he really brought my vision to life. And by July, the website was done, but I did not launch it until August. And also during this time, as I was working on the website, I was also meeting with different photographers to take different pictures for the blog as well. And by July, the website was done. And also in July as well is when I planned in like six days, a blog launch party and a pop-up shop. And so many people, came to that pop-up shop and that blog launch party. And I always look back on that with a lot of gratitude because it was very, very last minute. I advertised it on like a Tuesday and it was on a Sunday, that Sunday. And it was so last minute, but so many people showed up and it was a really amazing time. I had family members that cooked food. My uncle Nolan made his famous rum punch and that was done in the quickness. <laughs> But it was a great, great time. And on August 2nd, 2018 is when I launched the blog and it was called Key to Fashion. I dropped the the because the website designer said, you know, I don't think you should say the key to fashion. That's weird to have a website with the key to fashion. I think you should just call it Key to Fashion. And after thinking about it for some time, I'm like, you know what? He's right. Let's do it. So in 2018 is when I launched Key to Fashion. And at first, it was a fashion blog and then I turned it separate from me where it was more so of a brand and I created an Instagram platform from it and I also started to sell vintage clothing that year so that was 2019. In the following year is when I started the IG live talk show for Vintage Glamour and in the following year is when I brought that to the podcast streaming platforms. Now there's a lot more I can state here regarding key to fashion in these past five years. There's definitely been a lot of high moments, but I've definitely had my fair share of lows, but I have learned a lot and I have grown a lot. I have grown a lot, but I want to leave you all with some lessons because I think that these lessons are really important to share. So the first lesson is that it's okay to be the tortoise and not the hare. Now, being a millennial or a Gen Z, we are very used to seeing people grow really fast on social media and advance really fast on social media. And oftentimes I can make some people start to ask themselves, am I doing something wrong? Should I be moving faster? Should I be growing faster? But I realized that it is okay to be the tortoise and not the hare. It is more than okay to embrace your own journey, to embrace your own story, and to take your own time building your own vision. It is more than okay. This lesson has been tremendous for me because it's allowed me to really understand the detours and the turns and the twists that I've had to take to get to where I am today. 
And, you know, although Kita Fashion is no longer a thrift store, right, and it's now a fashion media brand, the twist and the turns and the changes all brought me here today. So that's the first lesson I want to share. The second lesson is that entrepreneurship is really about building your character for the purpose. Now, what I mean by that is that I have gained so many different experiences, whether good or bad, that have made me a better me, but have made me a better me for the purpose, have built me up for the purpose, have redefined my character for the purpose. And I realize entrepreneurship is really about building you up and becoming a better you for the purpose and the vision that you are designed to go after. It's all about character development. A lot of the things I have been going through, it's just been building my character and making me a better me, but making me a better me for the purpose. And that has been a profound lesson to learn as well. And I realized that a lot of the twists and turns or the detours that have happened throughout my journey were only preparing me for the purpose, were only preparing me for this vision and for this calling. So that's the second lesson that I want to share. And I would say the last lesson that I learned is that you have to have a lot of faith. You have to have a tremendous tremendous amount of faith. During times when your faith is tested, you have to hold your faith very, very high. And that is definitely a lesson that I have learned throughout this journey is that faith matters and you have to have that mustard seed of faith at all times. And so I'm excited for the next five years to come. I'm excited to see where Kita Fashion goes. And I'm most importantly grateful not only to still be doing this, not only to be here, but for the audience that's growing and for the audience that will continue to grow. I am so grateful. When I think about Key to Fashion, I always think about the community and how I really want to nurture the community and really want the community to grow. And I always wanted to do a YouTube channel, but I was also really focused on just building that Instagram platform. And I actually no longer have access to the Instagram platform. I don't know if it got hacked. I'm not sure what happened. But intuitively, I know it's just redirecting me to be where I'm supposed to be, which is on YouTube. So I'm grateful to be here and I'm grateful to see where this platform takes Kita Fashion and just to see Kita Fashion grow and thrive in the next five years to come. I would go longer, but it's getting dark and the lighting is starting to change. And I'm like, all right, I, I don't want the lighting to be too dark now where I can't do this anymore. But I just wanna tell you all, thank you so much for tuning in and for watching this video and for making it to the end. Your support means a lot and I really hope that you feel my gratitude from your screen. Wherever you're watching me from, whether it's your computer, your phone, I really hope that you feel my gratitude. And I am so excited for the next five years to come. So cheers to Kita Fashion making it to five years. Cheers to you all for the support, joining this community and being a part of this community. Cheers to it all. So as always, you all, thank you so much for tuning in to another video here on the Kita Fashion YouTube channel. And I hope you all have a great one. Bye now.